Hi, I'm Trawler Specialist Jeff Merrill. I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Douglas Cochran. Jeff and I have teamed up to make a series of videos called The Physics of Docking. And this is part five of our continuing series on the physics of docking. I assume you've watched our previous segments, which form the basis of how physical forces interact with the boat when moving through the water. Now let's pull it all together and talk about the actual process of docking. Our focus in this series is on docking large, full displacement, single screw vessels. We will start this series of videos with the simplest form of docking, where we approach a long side tie. Well, Douglas, you've given us some, some really good tools for maneuvering our boat with uh, prop wash and prop walk, but there are a lot of different ways to approach a marina and a slip. What are some of the choices that we have and how do you prepare for those? Well, we're gonna go step by step through different ways of docking. Our focus in this uh, series is large single screw ocean going boats, but even small boats and even very large ships all respond to the, to the forces in much the same way. But for beginning uh, docking here, we're gonna talk about side ties. And a side tie is the easiest kind of a dock because typically you have plenty of room. There's no other expensive boats to run into on a side tie and you can just come in if you blow it you've got room to move or typically room enough to go out and turn around again and try you're not again. trapped between two slips so uh, a side tie for a good example be a fuel dock you come in a fuel dock that's usually a side tie you can come in or a long pier or a t dock at the end okay good well that's good so we're gonna start with side ties yeah i All think right. we should that's an easy easy way to start learning to dock let's do it the theory here is pretty simple we approach the dock slowly from an angle of perhaps 30 degrees as the bow nears the dock, we put the rudder hard over to turn away from the dock. We give the boat a short burst of power in forward gear. Since boats rotate on a pivot point, this kicks the stern toward the dock as the bow swings out. If our timing is right, the boat ends up parallel and close to the dock. Let's look at this in real life. All right, I'm coming up to a side dock here. Got a nice slow speed. Center my wheel for the approach and come in at an angle. It's about a 30 degree angle. Fenders are down, dock lines are ready. My thrusters are ready. Just gonna kind of coast in. The hesitating part can sometimes be painfully tentative, but slow is pro. All right, as I get closer into the dock, I'm gonna steer my bow out, which will bring my stern in. Still gliding, I'm in neutral. Give it a little nudge, bring me around, slight reverse just to slow my speed down. Coming into the dock now, nice. And I'm at the dock. So from here I can thrust over. I wanna make sure I put my wheel back at center. I'm in neutral, give it a little reverse and just Glide in, the wind's gonna help me here. We're there, pretty easy. When you're on a side tie, you can leave the dock pretty easily, but one of the things that you can do that you might not think about is you can go with the bow to starboard towards the dock to kick your stern out. So I'm parallel with the dock right now. I'm gonna put some helm in to bring my bow in. I'm just gonna give it one little nudge. And then I'm gonna go in reverse. I have enough room up forward that my bow is not gonna hit. I back up and as I'm backing up, I'm separating my stern from the dock. I know there's nobody behind me so I can go back plenty of room. And what I wanna do is allow enough room so that when I feel like I have it, I can then go in forward and leave the dock in a straight position. So now I've got the boat heading parallel with the dock and I've separated from it and I can move away in a straight line and depart the dock. 
and away we go. So I think the, the best way to learn how to do this is to do it, to practice. And uh, a lot of people on a boat find that if they, if they want to be heard, they have to raise their voice, which gets into shouting. And, and you and I both agree there should be a no shouting rule. Absolutely. One, one tip that a lot of boaters are using are uh, remote headsets. So the skipper and the crew are each wearing one of these uh, headsets. They have a microphone on them. It leaves one ear to listen to the headset and one that's open to people on the dock and you can communicate with a normal voice. So if I want to talk to Douglas, she wants to talk to me, we can talk in a conversational voice as opposed to yelling. Which really lowers the tension level immensely because it, it, no matter, even if you do know what you're doing, if you're shouting at each other, it tends to make everybody a little more nervous. And the people on the dock don't think you know what you're talking about. Or if you just come in quietly chatting with each other, it makes it look like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. Yeah, and you know, I, I, you can do hand signals. I mean, people have those, and, and if, if you've got a system that works fine, but I really think the headsets and practice are what we're really talking about here. That's right. So when you're practicing, what I would encourage you to do is, instead of trying to dock, practice coming in well away from the dock. Stay 10 feet off or something. Just see if you can stop the boat parallel to the dock and a comfortable distance away. And then once you're comfortable with that, which takes two or three times sometimes to get the feel for that. Close the gap. Close again. the gap to five feet, close the gap to two feet, and pretty soon you'll come right into the dock. It's about controlling the positioning of your boat. If you can position the boat and control that, you can dock anywhere. That's right. Good. Good. Stay tuned for more docking skills in our next segment.